I can't promise to add to the excitement because I'm speaking as chairman of the CARICOM Competition Commission, which is a quasi-judicial office. And I've taken an oath of office not to be controversial. If I say anything controversial, it's because I've slipped off that hat and I'm wearing my UWI hat. I have entitled my presentation, which I'm sure you have and which you will read at your leisure, A Cautionary Tale. Because my purpose here this evening is a little more prosaic. It is to lay down the law. And it's perhaps just as well that I come after a speaker who's talked about the relationship between economic growth and crime. Because I think you could probably glean from what he said that it is possible to be economically successful and be a criminal at the same time. And what I want to do is to caution that in the search for competitiveness, the law must be followed. This is uh, why, as I say, I've called it a cautionary tale. I'm laying down the law, and in my presentation, I make a distinction between competitiveness and competition, and I argue that the pursuit of one without the other is going to be self-defeating that one can indeed strive to be competitive and achieve competitiveness, but if one does it without following the regulatory environment, that is going to be self-defeating. Or, as we heard from Levi Roots this morning, it's going to be a quick hustle and it will not be self-sustaining. It's perhaps useful that he could make that point because he operates in England, where, as you know, the competition law is very strict. So, my purpose then is to explain that the pursuit of competitiveness, especially using the device of clustering, is not going to work unless the rules are followed. And there are these four things that happened already this morning that made it uh, important for me to try to give this caution. The first thing, you would have heard more than one speaker use the words competition and competitiveness in the same breath, almost as if it were the same thing. And sometimes the word was used interchangeably. But clearly these are two different disciplines with two different areas of operation. The second thing, you would have heard some speakers talk about the regulatory environment. Well, we have a major regulatory environment in the Caribbean known as competition. In the revised treaty of Shagaramas, it is chapter 8, and this lays down the rules of competition. Some of our member states have national competition agencies. Here in Jamaica, there's a very vibrant competition agency, the Fair Trading Authority, so too in Barbados. And although you may not know this, but each one of our countries in CARICOM have undertaken to have national competition commissions. Barbados, Jamaica, Belize, Suriname, where my colleague comes from, who's just spoken, and all of the OECS territories, although they have taken a very novel position of having one agency for them that they will call their national competition agency. So we have a major regulatory environment that people must abide by and must adhere to in the search for competitiveness. Also, as you might have heard this morning, there was a mention, a continuing mention of the EPA, the Economic Partnership Agreement, and of the Canada negotiations between CARICOM and Canada for free trade arrangements. All of these treaties have chapters on competition. And these chapters say that we are obliged to share certain kinds of information with competition agencies in those other countries. So assume, for example, that a firm in Jamaica or throughout the Caribbean decides to be competitive, is competitive, but does so breaking the law, and suppose it wants to enter the market in Canada or in Europe, and the European or Canadian agencies are aware that the law has been broken, they will ask for information, and that firm will find itself, as competitive as it is, unable to enter those markets. Moreover, it might find itself the subject of proceedings in front of the Competition Commission. So my purpose then is to talk about this cautionary tale to say in the search for competitiveness, especially for competitiveness through the device of clustering, 
to be sure that one follows the law. And for this purpose, I'm just going to read what the law says in the revised treaty of Shagaramas, which is meant to prohibit anti-competitive business conduct. What I have to say is aimed at the private sector, it's aimed at government business enterprises, and it's also aimed at my university colleagues who might give advice to the private sector or the government sector. So this is what it says. Member states must prohibit within their jurisdiction as being anti-competitive business conduct which is outlawed. One, agreements between enterprises, decisions by associations of enterprises, and concerted practices by enterprises, which have as their object or effect the prevention, restriction, or distortion of competition within the community. Now, I heard, and it was very interesting, I heard Levi Root say that he thrives on competition and he wants to be in an area where he can compete. The law is based on the principle that competition increases consumer welfare. And therefore, anything which undermines competition is likely to be an infringement of the law. So when firms are clustering, when they have agreements between enterprises, when they are sharing information in their clusters, they have to be aware that certain things are proscribed and must not be done. The law also says that it is anti-competitive actions by which an enterprise abuses its dominant position within the community or any other like conduct whose object or effect is to frustrate the benefits expected from the establishment of the CSME. So now, this is a caution that firms in seeking to be competitive, and especially in doing so through trade associations or by clustering in various forms, should obey the rules of competition. And the law goes on to define certain anti-competitive business conducts, which I will just um, read a few for you as things which you must not do. Firstly, the direct or indirect fixing of purchase or selling prices. Secondly, the limitation or control of production, markets, investment, or technical development. Thirdly, the artificial dividing up of markets or restriction of supply sources. And there are lots of others, predatory pricing, price discrimination, loyalty discounts or concessions, exclusionary vertical restrictions, bid rigging, or making the conclusion of one contract subject to the acceptance by the other party of an additional obligation which has no real connection, like going into the market to buy onions and the vendor tells you yes, but you must also buy potatoes. So, we have some rules here, a regulatory regime which should be followed. And in deference now to my chair, who is a, a scholar of the sugar industry in the Caribbean, among other things, I'm just going to read something that just came to me. This is an agreement among a group of sugar producing countries exporting to Europe. They are the EBA countries, that is those countries who fall under the Everything But Arms Initiative. In other words, they can sell anything into Europe, duty free and quota free, except arms. And last week, they asked for advice from their lawyers about what they could and could not talk about. Now they've been doing this for years, they've been meeting and talking, but suddenly they have awoken to the idea that a great deal of their conversation violates the rules of competition. And so the lawyer has given them advice that they must not discuss among themselves any of the following types of information. Pricing or other terms of dealing with customers. Customer details such as volumes, location, identity, payment and credit terms current or future production capacity or output of individual countries or individual companies or factories. 
individual country or company manufacturing and development costs, margins, allocations of customers, regional areas of product types, or company-specific business plans, including national plans, which would allow the plans of individual producers to be ascertained, marketing initiatives, market share data, or any other commercially sensitive information. When I shared this with a, a very uh, distinguished Caribbean writer, poet, statesman, scholar, who was for a long time the marketing manager of the sugar company in Guyana, the same one that produces the rum that you heard about earlier. He was aghast. He said, but this is what for years we have been talking about. How come all of a sudden we are not allowed to share this kind of information? The reason is that the fastest growing area of law in the world is competition law. In 10 years ago, there were about 20 competition agencies in the world. Now there are 130. And all the trade treaties that CARICOM is signing with other countries in Canada, in Europe, and in Latin America, all the partial scope treaties that are being signed with Colombia, with uh, uh, Panama, with Guatemala, they will all have competition chapters that will oblige the competition authorities in CARICOM to share information with their counterparts in other parts of the world about firms who, in the pursuit of their search for competitiveness, are violating the rules. And therefore, as successful as those firms might be, that success will not be sustainable. It will be short-lived. It will be what Levi Roots talked about this morning. It will be the quick hustle it will not be a self-sustaining platform. So that's what I wanted to share with the audience today. I wanted to say that in relation, therefore, to this very laudable goal of trying to be as competitive as possible, one must obey the rules. Thank you very much.